tonight just rests and recuperates some more and um, uh, and then tomorrow it's off to Melbourne then Saturday flying to Brisbane and then Sunday um, back to Harvey Bay and then rest and recreation for um, uh, I said to Gina my wife um, I said I'm just going to um, lie on the couch and watch uh, Netflix which is probably about probably the truth of it I won't be doing much else and then the plan will be from here to do the overnight passage again it's 130 miles to Eden and then from Eden it's going to be I'm going to try and do it as quickly as I can um, without putting myself under pressure of course it all depends on the weather um, and then I'm going to try and do the the day hops all the way up to uh, Queensland and theoretically you could do it in a couple of weeks um, even allowing for a bit of rest on the way but um, but the biggest problem uh, as it always is is the weather and uh, the wind is uh, um, uh, the wind uh, calls the shots and if you've got strong headwinds which that it is at the moment off the coast of New South Wales it's strong northerlies um, I wouldn't be going anywhere so that's the loose plan and we'll see how we go from there the biggest problem is this marina apparently has been here about 20 odd years but when I asked whereabouts the toilets and showers were they haven't got any and uh, so this is probably the only marina I think in Australia that I know of that doesn't have um, uh, shower and toilet facilities which is amazing so I said oh well is there a public toilet and shower? And there is, just up the road, only 50, 100 metres up the road, 100 metres, I suppose, up the road. And that's where I'm going to get the bus tomorrow. And, uh, but I went up for a look, and it wasn't a very a pretty place, but it had a, a one shower, but no hot water. And I thought, oh, you've got to be kidding. So, um, so I'm just about to have a shave and have a bit of a bird bath and have a bit of a wash and then Tomorrow I'll, I'll be at Marg's and uh, um, so I'll have a um, lovely hot shower there and, uh, and so um, I said I warned her that I'll probably stink a bit and nobody will probably sit near me on the bus. Well, here it is, uh, the morning after my dramatic day yesterday. <laughs> and why I'm showing you this is because what happened was I, um, and it was low tide, and as you can imagine, the uh, boat was a lot lower than what it is now, uh, considerably lower, probably about a metre lower. And I decided uh, to go ashore and so I stepped up onto the rail there and stepped out onto um, right where that fire hydrant thing is um, and stepped and stepped up there. But the problem was I had my cap on and it is one of those things, um, they are so dangerous because you lose that vision up. So I just stepped up thinking it was all clear and my head hit the end this end there of the uh, fire hydrant and knocked me, whacked me on the head. I fell backwards, crashed into the water um, and uh, luckily I was able to pull the ladder down at the back of the boat. I'll actually go and show you that I think if I can. Not feeling the best today but uh, yeah so anyway I then hit there, crashed down onto the into the water here but I was in the water and I was able to pull the ladder down there which I'll pull up shortly and climb back on board and because of my you know extreme uh, state of weakness and everything yesterday I didn't think that was going to be possible but I did I got back on board and then of course I realized I'd lost my glasses and sunglasses um, on my uh, into the water and also my watch, the watch, uh, the band had broken and the watch had gone into the water 
my cap and thongs were in the water, but I managed to grab those and pull, pull them and throw them on board. And there's my wet old clothes from what, what happened. So I got back on board and of course then the first thing I realised was that I had my wallet and my phone in my pocket. So I madly went down below and got out uh, some rice and uh, you know, sh shook the phone. Try. It didn't seem too wet, but, uh, but it was. And so I put it into rice. Well, here we are, just about ready to head off from Lake Entrance and head over to Eden, a long sail today. The weather looks a bit um, iffy, not much wind going, um, going across um, this morning and this afternoon. Hopefully it'll pick up a little bit, but then there's supposed to be a strong wind warning tomorrow, so I've got to try and get across to Lake Entrance, which is about 120 miles before that strong wind warning, uh, to Eden I should say, before that strong wind warning tomorrow. So here I am all ready to go, life jacket all ready to go, got my little um, tube on to protect me and we're just about to head off so wish me luck and we'll talk to you as we go out later. Here we are, we're on our way out, goodbye to Lake's entrance. That's the big boat gambler that was in front of me, which I think I know from the uh, Whit Sundays. Hang on, I'll turn that radio off. There we are. Now I've got to go out and calibrate the uh, the new little tiller pilot. So that's the first thing before we head off. And try to concentrate on what I'm doing. Talk to you soon. Well, there's never a dull moment in boating or yachting. Um, as you can probably see from where I am, I'm not out. I should have been out by now, but um, what happened was, and I'll explain, over there if you can see that little boat going across, that's the entrance into the channel leading out through the bar. Well, I went out there, and as I went out, um, I don't know if you can actually see it from here, you probably can't, but the current is still flowing now, and I went out about an hour ago, and it's this incoming tide and I guarantee it was coming in at about five or six knots so as soon as I got into it we just went nowhere we were virtually going backwards we're doing about a knot even at full revs so I abandoned that idea and turned to come back in and as I turned around the current just dragged me down and on your right there if you can see there's the entrance to the uh, northern wall and I was being dragged towards that northern wall so I flat out had to steer into the current and then come across and I got, I didn't end up on the wall obviously, but I got, um, I got through and then I went back down and I wanted to check the calibration again of the uh, compass, so the autopilot, um, little tiller pilot which is there. And so I went back down and did another circle, but it only seems to do one circle, which is a bit weird, but it seems to be working okay seems as if the compass is working so um, here we are at Flagstaff I'll take you for a bit of a look at this is Flagstaff jetty and you can stay here for 48 hours um, but I might have to stay a little bit longer um, it's not busy anyway so that looks okay because I'm not sure whether I'm gonna go um, now the problem is <coughs> oh, excuse me. the problem is that uh, the um, weather, it's forecast for strong wind warning tomorrow, easterly is coming in tomorrow. Now that is a bit of a problem. If I don't get over to uh, the corner to go around to Eden by tomorrow lunchtime, which could be a bit difficult because there's no wind today. 
and uh, even motoring I still don't think I'd get over there in time and so if I get over there and uh, and I get caught in 30 knots east south easterly it's not going to be very pleasant so now I've got to make the decision but the thing is once even if I did get to Eden the next few days four days are going to be um, a strong wind warning um, with northerlies and uh, now I wouldn't get out of Eden anyway so um, so what do I do do I wait here for another four days Well, I just did the walk up to Flagstaff and uh, that's where I'm standing. That's the uh, Flagstaff there and that's the leads, one of the leads there. That's the back lead. But there's the entrance. Good morning. Just going for a walk uh, today for the first time this morning. As you can see, um, just going off Flagstaff Jetty. But if you can have a look around, you can see what a grey, miserable day it is. Southwesterlies have arrived. It's going to be a strong wind warning um, this morning, and it's going to swing southeasterly. So I'm really glad I'm not out there. Um, uh, yeah, I had a pretty, pretty restless night. Pretty restless night last night. Um, didn't sleep all that well. Didn't really want to get out of bed this morning, <laughs> um, but uh, managed to get up and cook the lovely breakfast. Had some cereal and then cooked some bacon and eggs. Having some uh, bacon and eggs for Recky. It's the first time I've cooked in here for a little while and doing my crossword from the Australian. We're about to do that. Getting ready to have some um, cook an egg with my bacon. And uh, got to got to keep the energy levels up. Determined this time to to eat because after my previous uh, time, at, particularly at um, Re uh, Refuge Cove on Wilson's Promontory. I didn't eat uh, for days and uh, just didn't feel like eating, just snacked a little bit and it really depleted my energy which was not good. So this time definitely um, eating, cooking and you know I read this morning and uh, did the crossword from the Australian uh, so just to keep myself a bit busy but it's going to be a pretty boring week I think. This weather doesn't look very promising. Well, there's uh, the big dredge going out through the entrance to the bar which doesn't look too good today as you can probably see so not as good a day today cold overcast showers and windy and it's going to get worse for the next few days g'day here we are well, we've just left lake's entrance finally after weeks finally got out and uh, it's a pretty lousy day, they're all showers and everything this morning. Um, but as you could probably see, there's, there's a bit of cloud over there, but it looks like it might be clearing a bit. There's still plenty ahead of us, some rain ahead of us. And, uh, just had seven knots a couple of times now, but I'll just see if we can catch it. We just had to get in there a second ago. Six, seven. Not bad for a little girl. 